Welcome back to Star Game Studios Gameplay Ability System Subseries Part 2. In today's video, we will get the player's first ability working through the ability system. I hope that you have a good understanding of what is going on so far. If not, no worries. Just hop on Discord and give me a yell. Let's get this party started. Today, we are going to pass the player character through an interface. We have used interfaces, but they have not been explained in detail. This time, I will explain things better so you understand what's going on. Interfaces at first seem daunting, but are straightforward. So, what is an interface? An interface is a messaging system that can send information about something to any blueprint that cares to listen. We can send our player character's data, meaning anything the player character has or does, can be forwarded to any other blueprint through this messaging system. Likewise, the opposite end of the messaging system can send information back. We used an interface in the creature mounting system to send information back and forth between the player character and the EOP to know when to pick the player up and when to drop it off. In this video, we will take the ability logic from the player character blueprint, put it in the player base class blueprint, and make it work. This is actually easier than it sounds. We will start with the player base class blueprint and work our way up in the inheritance chain. The logic will be temporary here, so we can learn how the interface works. Okay, let's create a blueprint interface. Name it Ability Interaction. The function inside of this interface, we will name Ability Interact. That is basically what we are doing with it, interacting with the ability logic. We won't use any inputs or outputs for now. In the class settings for the player character, add the Ability Interaction interface to the implemented interfaces. Do the same for the player base class. Also, I forgot to add the prefix BPI to the interface name. Do that now. Delete the keyboard event to node. I want to use the input system instead. Now, let's copy the attack logic and the overlap event and paste it into the player base class. If you compile and save, you will notice it gives a lot of errors. We can fix that. It's what the interface is for. We can just create a variable to eliminate the errors for the is attacking variable. There is no need to get fancy and try to access the player character variable. Replace the setter nodes with our new variable. Also, replace the getter variable. Next, add a get actor of class node between the set is attacking and the play anim montage nodes. The actor class is, of course, the player character class. This gives us the reference to the player character. This gets rid of the errors. However, there is a warning that we will deal with in just a bit. If we disconnect the keyboard event from the player character logic and run the game, we cannot attack punch. This is because the player base class has no reference object in the scene. Normally, a blueprint would include some tangible object in the scene, such as the player character, a creature mount, a house, a weapon, or some other object. We could make a cube, hide it, and drop it in the scene, which is a typical solution. 
However, in this game and most games, we need this blueprint to persist forever. When we go to a different planet or change scenes, as it were, the blueprint would need a reference object in that scene as well. Luckily, Unreal Engine has a fix for that. So now, at the beginning of the video, I said we would pass the player character through the interface to the player base class. Actually, that's not entirely true. We will pass the player base class to the player character as well. In the player base class blueprint, open the interface under my blueprint. You should see the function we created for the interface. Double click it and it will appear on the event graph. Delete the keyboard event for the attack punch and replace it with the ability interact event. We need to create an input action to trigger the attack. Open the third person input and actions folders. Create a new input action for ability one. Open the file and add a new array element for triggers. We want the pressed element. This is because we want the trigger to only activate once per press. Now open the IMC default or the input mapping context and add a new mapping. Find the new input we made and add the keyboard event one to it by clicking the keyboard and pressing the one key. In the player character blueprint, create a new variable named spawned actor of type player base class. This variable is a reference to the player base class. You can delete the is attacking variable here. We don't need this one anymore. We can delete this as well. Find the Enhanced Input Action IA Ability 1 node. Get the Spawned Actor variable and find the Ability Interact Message node. If it doesn't say Message on it, it will not work. You can tell it's a message node because it has an envelope in the upper right hand corner of the node. This is the pipeline between the two blueprints that talk to each other. Remember earlier when I said the player base class has no reference in the scene? Here's where we create that reference. Make a custom event and name it Retrieve Spawned Actor. From here, get the spawn actor from class. The class will be the player base class. Set the spawned actor variable as the return value. This fills the variable with the player base class. Another thing is to get actor transform and connect it to the spawn transform. We will get an error without it. This logic spawns the player base class into the scene since we don't have a reference object. For it to spawn, we have to call the event in our begin play section. That should do it. Compile, save, and give it a go. The character should now run the punch animation without spamming, just like before. However, the attack on the enemy will not work yet. Okay, so it killed the enemy. It's because we still have the overlap logic in the player character. Delete that and it will not work anymore.
We want the overlap logic to work in the player base class, but we have a warning on the overlap event. We can delete the on component begin overlap node as this is a reference to the player character sphere collision. We are still going to make a reference to it, but in a different way. Let's make a variable and name it RH sphere collision. This will be of type sphere collision. Make it instance editable and expose on spawn. Find the on component begin overlap event in the details panel and click the plus icon. Connect it up like before. If we go back into our player character blueprint, we need to delete the spawn actor from class node. Find it again and hook it back up. Notice that the RH sphere collision pin has been added to it. We can drag a reference to the right hand punch from our components and connect it to that pin. Try it out now. The enemy dies like before and all of the attack logic is in the player base class. Great, and we didn't have to use a cast two to do it. In the next video, we will take that logic out of the player base class and make it work in the brawler class where it should. I really hope you learned something good from this video. Interfaces are not hard. They are the preferred method of communication between blueprints, especially for larger games. Hard references, such as cast twos, are an expense to the system by leaving them in the memory from the start of the game. Interfaces use virtually none. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this valuable and enjoyable. Please like and subscribe to see more upcoming videos in this series, as well as other useful content. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded.